This is a quick video where I compare different camera settings and apps on the iPhone 14 Pro to get the best video footage as possible. I mainly do bike reviews on my other channel and for 2024 I'm thinking about downsizing my gear from a 6 kilo backpack to just have my GoPro, a small drone and finally my iPhone. But I don't want to lose too much image quality. Compare a clip from my iPhone with this clip from my Sony ZV-1. The Sony camera is only an 8-bit point-and-shoot camera. But to me, the image is way better than what I get from the iPhone. To the point that I'm reluctant to stop using the Sony. The iPhone 14 still produces an over-sharpened and a very digital image, which I don't find very pleasing. I'm thinking that a mist filter could soften the image somewhat. But that's more of an afterthought, like putting makeup on a pig or something. I'm super bummed over that Apple Log is only available on the iPhone 15 Pro and it will probably never come as a firmware upgrade to my iPhone. That image looks like something I could use. Back to the iPhone 14 Pro and to this test. I have three camera apps that I use and maybe the Blackmagic app can give me something even more interesting in the future since it's just been released. But first, we try the native camera app. Even if you are not very interested in bikes, this is a perfect scene to film, as it's very challenging and a revealing scene for any camera. Lots of details, the white paint overexposes easily, and there are details in the blacks too. And there's a very busy background. As a reference, I have my Sony CV-1 in a tweaked HLG3 setting. HLG3 allows for some better dynamic range than HLG1 and 2, but at the cost of more noise in low light scenarios. This is a 1 inch sensor paired with a very good zoom lens and I'm always amazed when I see comparison videos on YouTube. Often you can't tell images from like the Sony FX30 apart from what this camera produces. I like this image even if I know it's not 100% perfect. These first clips are not color graded. This is what it looks like straight from the camera. The native app produces a more processed image, but I think this is okay for a phone. In this particular scene, I don't know what happened in the HDR mode. The native app can only shoot 1080p in ProRes, but I think it looks okay. Huge file sizes though. I already knew that the cinematic mode does not work with detailed objects. Check the wheels on the bike. This image is pleasing to my eyes. There is harmony in the colors. There's no difference in the image when switching to 10 bits. Maybe you could push the colors and contrast a bit more with 10 bits. This is filmed in the P3 color space. P3 has a wider color gamut, which should be taken into account for when color grading. Finally, there's a HLG profile available in the Cinema P3 app. 10 bits even. I think this looks really good for being a phone. But I don't know if this is a proper HLD or only a simulated fake profile. HLD stands for Hybrid Log Gamma and it's a very advanced profile. It's an open source standard which produces an image with a high dynamic range. It's pretty easy to color grade and to match the image between different cameras. So this looks promising. Everybody talks well about the Black Magic app, but I'm a bit underwhelmed by the image it produces. One problem that I have with it is that I overexpose all the time with the app. Then the colors are a bit off, so color grading is necessary to move the image to where I want. REC 2020 or BT 2020 is much wider than the REC 709 and P3 and should work well with 4K HDR video in theory. But even if I did some color space transform, as we will see later, I didn't find much improvement in the final output. Here I tested the difference between the older H.264 compression format and the newer H.265. It shouldn't really be any difference in the image as far as I'm aware, only in file size. But still, the colors shift a bit between the two compression formats. This is the P3 color space. I don't know, maybe it's okay? And then there's ProRes, 422 even, which again produces huge file sizes but I don't think this ungraded image looks any good despite that. And then back to the Sony camera. I still like this a whole lot more. Time for some color grading, or color correction I should say. I'm by no means any colorist, but chances are that you aren't either. So don't expect to easily get a whole lot better results than this. 
I tried my best to create a normal image for each clip, but I didn't try to match the clips, since that would mean that I sometimes would need to push the image a bit too much. This is the Sony ZV-1 again. Beautiful. The native 4K from Apple is okay, but it was a bit too warm for my taste. Over sharpened, of course, which you clearly can see in the trees, for instance. HDR, I don't know, looks like crap to me in this scene. ProRes looks okay, but still only 1080p with a huge file size, which means that's a no for me. Color correction doesn't exactly help here. I think the cinematic mode works better in landscape scenes. Yes, the standard 8-bit footage from the Cinema P3 app looks okay. The 10-bit footage is a bit too warm though. Strange, since all other settings are exactly the same. The P3 color space looks okay-ish, but I like the Rec. 709 better, to be honest. HLG is nice. It was a bit warm when ungraded though, at least in my opinion, but I'm starting to get a bit colorblind by now. There is something that just doesn't sit right with the black magic images. I don't know what it is. I don't know, the P3 color space looks the best with this app, I think. But I couldn't get ProRes to work at all here, despite using color space transform. And then back to my CV1. If you're not interested in images of a bike, I did the same test with the public trash can. The light was more consistent here, so maybe this can give us something. Some flickering here on the trash can makes it look like images from a cheap camera with a small sensor, which it essentially is. HDR looks overexposed despite the exact same automatic settings as in the previous clip. Unusable. Is it the Nordic winter light that the iPhone struggles with? Maybe it works better on a sunny beach or something. I guess this looks okay, but it's still that flickering on the trash can. 10 bits again, not a huge difference. P3 still flickers, but otherwise it's okay, I think. Same with HLG. Can't seem to make ProRes work properly. Too yellowish and it's not the temperature. Maybe the standard Rec. 709 setting is the best for the Blackmagic app. P3 is extremely sensitive when it comes to temperature adjustments for some reason. Looks decent for being from this app though. These are my top three picture profiles, based on image quality and storage. For these scenes, the standard Rec. 709 looks the best to me. Cinema P3 looks good in both Rec. 709 and HLG. I choose HLG. Maybe I will get a little bit more dynamic range out of that picture profile, but that's debatable. If you're twisting my arm, I would go for the P3 color space of the Blackmagic app. But overall, I will stay away from Blackmagic for now, since I think Cinema P3 produces a more pleasing image and a more consistent result overall, no matter which settings I use. These are a few shots in a very different environment I shot this summer, just to show that Cinema P3 works in these scenarios too. As you can tell, I'm a bit disappointed in the iPhone 14 Pro, as long as there's no log profile or flat picture profile. The image will always look a bit digital and over sharpened and over processed. It's difficult to correct that in post. Maybe I should use my GoPro to film my bike reviews. It's got good colors and uh, pretty good audio quality as well. So maybe that's an alternative. Maybe the iPhone 15 Pro will take the win between the Sony CV1 and the iPhone. So that's my take on this iPhone. Sorry to disappoint, but I hope you got something out of this video. See you in the next one.